Good afternoon, everybody. The Building and Facilities Construction Committee meeting will now come to order at 3.03? Yes. Thank you. Um, at this time, I'd like to turn the meeting over to our administrator, Matt Wojcik, to um, call the uh, meeting to reorganize. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Madam Vice Chair. The question before the committee is reorganization. Are there any nominations for the duties of chair? I nominate Shirley Brzezinski. Second. You're not going to let me get away, are you? Are there, are are there, there any other nominations? Any other nominations? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Nominations are now closed. All in favor of Shirley Mosinski serving the duties of chair, please signify so by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Yes. When did that happen? Well, because he didn't get reappointed at his request because he is. Yes. Will you be here at every meeting from Mosinski? If he can. <laughs> um, At which time Fred can bail me out. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll help him along the way as much as I can. Okay. Uh, do you need to do a vice chair? Yes, we do. She can do it. Oh, yes. Sure. Um, nominations for vice chair. Hello, friend. I'm not interested. Thank you. You can do it. Yes. <laughs> You're not here anymore. Linda. I nominate Ginger Howe as vice <laughs> chair. <laughs> well, you willing? I guess so. Okay. Is there a second? Is there I'll any second. other nominations? Oh. Okay. Is there a sec uh, you, second? You second it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> nominations will be closed. All those in favor of Ginger Howe as vice chair, signify by saying aye. 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 Pose. And I. I see. Okay. Thank you. And just so the recorder can um, record. And know everybody that's here, I'd like you to each one uh, go around the table and state your name. Linda Brown. Peter Members for us. Peter Members for yes. us. Yes. Shirley Mazinski. Virginia Howell. Fred Fontaine. And everybody knows Matt. Mike and Mike. Patrick. Thank you. Don't forget Adam. Ah, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I, know he, I know he blends into the woodwork. Yeah, well, he's behind, he's behind yeah. Matt. Yeah, I keep moving like this. You know, <laughs> moves out. Walk. That's not walking out. Okay. Wow. All right, I think, um, I thank Matt for um, agreeing to meet with us because we've been asking to meet with him and he's had some uh, issues about... Uh, the times and so everybody agreed to meet at this time. Um, Sean knew about it. He, as I said, he's had some family situation and uh, he won't be here today as far as I know. All right. Um, so Madam Chair, just to be technical for a second, yes. could you please note that as an excused absence yes, thank for you. the note taker? Thank, thank you. you. Okay. He, will, he is noted as excused. Um, the first, uh, second item on the agenda is library and ADA accessibility update. I have not and did not seek out any information from the library board. The last I heard is they are continuing to raise money to proceed with um, getting funds to hire an architectural firm to draw up plans. But I did have a question. Um, I think it was 2020 um, or maybe 2019, yeah. The town meeting did um, vote to have a national, a member of the uh, National Organization on Disability. And Matt, I believe you appointed the individual for one year. So, because it was my impression, and somehow it must have been, that they had tried to, the library board had tried to um, 
get an ADA grant and came very close, but we did not have an ADA commission or committee, whatever. So what has this appointment done? So there are, there are actually two pieces. We have to have an ADA officer yeah. that assists us with compliance in all of our public spaces okay. with the Americans with Disabilities Act. And that person is the building commissioner, Ken Frazier. Okay. He, that's an annual appointment and he was just reappointed to that role. His familiarity with all the codes just made it logical that he would also do ADA compliance. Okay. Uh, he has been consulted in that role <clears throat> at the various construction projects, so especially the adult social center, mm -hmm. make, you know, mm -hmm. doing the measurements and looking at the grades of our ramps, et cetera, yep. et cetera. Now, separate and apart from that, there is, as a creature of state law, a disabilities commission. Town meeting had to adopt the local option under that statute to authorize the creation of that committee. So we are presently recruiting people to join that committee. Okay. Once that committee is constituted, it will also have more of an advisory policy making role for our buildings and facilities and accessibility okay. for, for folks. Um, <coughs> I believe, I have to go back to the wording of the statute, that the Board of Selectmen appoints the uh, ADA committee members. That, having not adopted the local option in a timely fashion, that did cost us points on our ADA application for the Adult Social Center. Mm -hmm. So we were very close to winning, but we didn't, we missed a few points to get us over the top. Um, so we've, we've done this in two steps now. So the library kind of got penalized because we didn't have an ADA person mm -hmm. named to the job, so we named the building commissioner to the job. And they came back the next year and said, well, it's that much more competitive, you gotta make sure you fill out your, adopt the local option and then fill out your committee. So by the time this year's grant applications are due, October 8th, we should have the ADA committee populated. Okay. And we should have at least one or two meetings before we apply. Yeah. What is it that this committee is, is going to be doing? What they are supposed to be doing is participating in all forward-looking conversations about building rehabilitation, construction, renovation, uh, to make sure that to the extent that it's technically feasible to do so, that anything new that we do is designed beforehand with the needs of, of people with physical challenges and other challenges. Um, as opposed to the building commissioner who inspects work, does the actual, takes out this ruler and makes sure it, it meets the, the code. It's a slight, there's a nuanced difference, but it's important to the community mm -hmm. that that difference be recognized. So what's the difference between them and this committee? They're specifically focused on the Americans with Disabilities Act. It's, it's for the uh, accessibility. This is a construction committee. Okay. We're totally two different things. Right. Yep. They, what, technically, they should be signing off on things before they come before here. I or that you would take into consideration their requests. Okay. Brad? How long have we been recruiting people for this committee? And Not that long, because we adopted it last year, but it was COVID, so we couldn't have any meetings. Yeah, it, was, it was fall town meeting. Um, <clears throat> so I think now that with restrictions lifted and we can actually get people together. And how are we recruiting? In this space, that's, the space itself has to be accessible, right? So. Yeah. Um, we've got a couple of people that work with us on different projects around town, uh, other aspects of town, whether it's uh, civilian uh, re emergency response and some other things. Um, we're hoping to reach out through them and then reach out through some of our clients at the Adult Social Center. It's a primary focus right at the moment. 
Ginger, questions. go ahead. This committee will determine what they think we need? No, they will determine specifically on questions of accessibility whether or not the plans and discussion about new projects include the needs of the disability community. Which still have to come before us. Still have to come before you. Yeah, they're there more for like a consulting basis to make sure we're identifying different things. Yeah, what is their power, I guess, is what I'm asking. Well, it's a federal statute, so we don't, all of us have to comply with, with federal law. Maybe. No, no, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I understand yeah. all of that. That's not tricky. That's not my question. I don't know what your question is then, because okay. you asked me what they do. They're supposed to be making sure the we are complying mm -hmm. with the Americans with Disabilities Act. Um, Matt, I have a question. There was a um, Mark Caffrelin that was appointed. Oh, that was the old building inspector. Okay, thank you. So evidently we don't have, Sorry. the officer is now the new building inspector. Yes, yep. we're just appointed. Okay, okay, thank you. Anyone else? Any other questions regarding that? No? Okay. Green energy. What can you tell us about the green energy situation? We have good news and bad news. Um, I don't know where you left off. What was, so when we have a project, we have to wait a year before we join the next round. Yep. And we have to complete all the projects before we're eligible to apply in the next right. round. So we had finished the primary school lighting retrofit. Yeah. We had finished the HVAC system in the police department. Yeah. And I think those were the last two significant projects. So we had a bit of a runaround with the consultant who frankly did a very poor job of designing the system downstairs. Mm -hmm. So for all intents and purposes I fired them and hired a new outfit uh, northeast and Don Robinson is their primary contact and by the time we settled that relationship because they get paid from the grants mm -hmm. we don't we don't pay them to just work for us they get paid when they're when we're successful right we were we were very close to a funding round that we were el eligible to apply for so they threw together an application very quickly and it was for um, four things. I just looked at it this morning in a long meeting, so I'm going to try to remember them all. There was a lighting retrofit, two lighting retrofits, a heat pump system for the Douglas Fire Station. Yeah. And I'm going to forget what the fourth one was because it was. Uh, no, so the lighting retrofits were at the post office slash senior center. And help me out, Adam, where was the other lighting project? Um, Primary school? I want to say about the school. No. I remember thinking, maybe it wouldn't have been in the fire station. Yeah, I think it's the fire station. It has to be, because that's the only other building. Yeah. So there's two lighting projects, the heat pump project, and um, we were not successful. The application round this year was more competitive than it ever has been. Mm -hmm. And we had some glitches, because in the rush to get things done, uh, there were some mathematical errors made by the consultant. That's the bad news. The good news is, They've added more funding rounds this year. So we can reapply or apply again in October, which today's okay. July 20. We had a meeting this morning, so we got all the feedback necessary from the state government and from CMRPC, which does a lot of the administration of our Green Communities grants. And um, 
there's a there there. We have, we have good projects. We just have to tighten up the presentation of the mathematics and uh, the presentation in particular with the Douglas Fire Department. We're in this, I, I talk all day about the station. The station's in big trouble in terms of its modern, lack of modern appliances and appurtenances. One of those things is the furnace is very old and very inefficient. And up until recently was set at its highest setting. So the thing was roaring through oil. And we discovered that in the course of fixing a problem with it. The contractor said, you've got this thing set and it's, it's you know, it was a tankless system, so it was constantly heating domestic hot water. And con during the winter, it's not a very ener energy efficient building. By its nature, it's always going to be challenging because the bay doors are opening and closing. But it was still very inefficient. We've saved a lot of money by taking all of the domestic hot water supply and putting it on a small propane fired hot water heater. So that saves the thing running constantly. In terms of its energy efficiency, it's still very inefficient. So what we're trying to do is spec out a heat pump system that's like this one outside okay. here, but designed properly like it was at the library. So the mm -hmm. library heat pump system is a huge success. It's done everything we thought it was supposed to do. <clears throat> so in other words, you would have individual control. Each individual space would have its own unit outside and that would be controlled by its own thermostat. So we're not doing what we're doing downstairs trying to balance air. We wouldn't do that at all. It would be set for the thermostat. It would either run or not run depending on what it was needed. And we can get rid of all these grotesquely prehistoric air conditioners that we have on wheels that we wheel around and then pipe out the window so we don't get any natural light because we have plywood and pipes for all these stupid air conditioners. And we can get rid of the furnace. The notion would be get a really high efficiency modern furnace and use it as power, as backup. Mm -hmm. So in the event that you can't fully power the station, you'd still be able to heat the bay so that the water on all those expensive fire engines wouldn't freeze. So that's the general plan. So Great. step one is get grant money for the heat pumps, right? Because that's where all the money's going to be. Um, when they did the calculations for how much we would save, so we're burning about 4,000 gallons a year. Just up there. Yeah. They weren't taking into consideration our conversion to the hot water heater and the insulation project that we also, that's, that's the fourth project. That was it. So it was the heat pump and the insulation at the fire department okay. and the two lighting projects. Um, so that's kind of where we are with green communities. We are going to reapply this fall. We are going to add a lighting project at the Douglas High School because that's where the most savings could be garnered. Mm -hmm. And if we still have room in the budget, I might add a vehicle because like, as you know, the one successful application we had from over the fall with the new consultant was for electric charging stations outside the municipal center. So. Okay. Questions? Yeah. Who is it that was supposed to have oversight of this at the get go that got us into this situation? We didn't even know what was going on. What's that, Green Communities? You were just telling us about the fact that we, didn't, we weren't aware of certain things. Who was supposed to be? You, you mean about the furnace and the fire yeah, yeah, that's what I was. That's an inherent problem that we have from the original design that we've done. And well, who was supposed to be aware of that and say, this is no good, we need to change this? You just and manifest it, now. if you don't mind that. Yeah. It kind of manifests it to where we're at today, because when that building was originally designed, it was designed for a call fire department, so it wasn't planned to be staffed 24 hours a day. Now that they're staffing 24 hours a day, all this stuff's coming to light, and the equipment's failing because of the age of the How equipment. long has it been? How long has it been staffed? Several years, I think. Well, I think we're in the fourth year. Easily. Mm -hmm. Twenty seventeen. But it's one of these things. Look, you know, I. 
building systems are such, you, you, you flick the switch, you walk in the building, it's warm like it's supposed to be warm, you fill the tank when it, it calls for it, and nobody down there is a, is a heating expert, and I, not to be, not to get on my soapbox, but I think unfortunately, the town of Douglas had a long running history of not entering into maintenance contracts. Some people who are very vocal viewed it as a waste of money. It is the smartest money you can spend. We need to be on top of all of our appliances every single year. Clean the filters, check all the systems, turn the valves, and make sure everything works the way it's supposed to. Because what you end up with over time is if those things are not done, we, we don't have anybody who does this on staff. The wear and tear starts to catch up with mechanical equipment and it starts to fail. And if, if I wanted to create a 300 hour a week position for myself, I would just keep looking into things. Because really, it's just a matter of when we turn the rock over, not whether we're going to find anything underneath it. Every single time we look into something, there's something that needs to be addressed. The, the long story short is, I'm pleased to say this town is way ahead of the prior two municipalities that I've worked for where nobody ever wanted to look at anything because they were afraid, <laughs> right? Don't open the door. They had a boiler in the basement at Woonsocket City Hall that had chambers in it. All the chambers had rotted out and then all of a sudden the thing's on fire and there's no heat in the building. So we had to basically close City Hall for two weeks while we found somebody who could fix that. So you're not there. You didn't neglect it for that long. It's not that big of a problem. It's just that the technology is moving forward steadily. So if you don't keep up with it, you've got some catching up to do. Um, I think in this particular case, we did not have a catastrophic failure. So I'm glad to say that. We didn't have anything really you know, fall to pieces in the heating system at the fire department. It's just in the course of weatherizing the place and trying to tighten up the building, uh, and having them actually, st we started entering into maintenance contracts. You know, they took the thing apart and said, oh, you know, this thing's burning real rich. So okay. now that we're aware of this whole situation, which seems to be town-wide at some level, according to your theory of 300 hours, <laughs> what are we going to do to resolve it? Because you're not going to work 300 hours. No, we're so what... wasting money all the time. And so that's not okay. So no. what's your solution? The solution is to rank order things by the cost and get the most expensive items taken care of right away. Who's going to do that? Well, that's what, that's what the 50, 60 hours a week person is supposed to be doing, and all of us working together. Who's the 50, 60 hours? That's me. <laughs> that's what, you got to do that. You got to figure out what's causing the most liability to the town, what's the most expensive thing, and whack away at those things you would never have been able to have a conversation about any of these capital items if you didn't have the money to do anything about it. That, to me, is the, it, I don't want to call it the excuse, but that's, those are the conditions that confronted decision makers in this town for the longest time. You didn't have the money. Mm -hmm. But you still have to know what the, the need is, what the solution is, and what the cost is. Yeah. So that we aren't sitting here going, well, first we've got to check and see what the problems are. You're telling me that's where we are right now. Yep. Well, I think, you know, we also learned that. And I'm not saying that. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Human, so yeah. so. No, I think, and Mike knows this because he's actually witnessed me do it one, a couple times now. I'll get a warrant to sign for expenditures. I don't know what my predecessors ever did, but I review the warrants item by item. Most of the time it's really routine, so they have power bills, phone bills, you know. Then you'll, then you'll look and you'll see a repair. And you'll say, well, what are we repairing that for? What's the problem? Oh, we had a such and such chemicals leaking from a pipe. Well, whose idea was it to put that chemical in that pipe? That's not a very smart thing to do. And then you start doing research and you find out, you say, well, can I have all the invoices for that vendor for the last six years, five years? And then you find out the school department spent $600,000 fixing their HVAC systems over the last five years. That's not normal, mm -mm. right? So but then you get resistance, you call over there and you say, hey, you know, I think 600 grand's a little too much. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
well, how do you know? How do you know if that's a lot of money or you don't know? I said, well, because I know. I, I don't walk, I don't have 600 grand in my pocket, do you? I mean, so if you look at those things and you start to say, oh, I want to investigate all of this stuff, now you're starting to burn a candle at both ends because you're not getting cooperation, you're up against a significant physical issue that you know exists, and you got to find the time because the best way to win the argument is to have all the facts lined up. To make sure that you're correct. So what's your plan? To I, we're we're them. grinding away at all of this Chip, stuff. If you don't mind. No. Chipping away at uh, paying attention to what Matt's been doing, and I try to help whenever I can with it. All these problems that he's talking about have been. I understand. Nobody's ever that. talked about it because it? we were, we're not never, talking about. I know. Okay, one at one at a time. None of these could get addressed because we couldn't do it. Because we didn't have money. Correct. We're finally in a position where things would be getting addressed, and you can't fix everything at once. Um, Adam is spread extremely thin. He, he's working in three different departments. Um, but I found him on the roof on a Sunday because he wanted to do preventative maintenance so we didn't have a problem for a, a leak in there. Um, these are the things that Matt somewhat talking about is we don't have somebody that could oversee this entire process to make sure that we're addressing all these different issues, whether it's the heating system at the fire station or this pipe that's clogged over here or, or whatever the case may be, uh, or just overseeing you know, what he just alluded to with the, uh, with the maintenance of, of a particular department. I asked him if I could look at the invoices, and I looked through them, and there was things that I'm looking at it from a building standpoint. So I'm just looking at it, and I'm not jumping up and down like an idiot. I'm just saying, Matt, this is what I would be concerned with, and then he takes it and does what he has. And he, that's just to help him because his plate's full 90% of the time, or 90% 90, 90 of the time. Um, and that's why we're meeting today. I went in and asked him. Um, if we could find some time so we could just sit here just to get everybody on the same page and understand that things are going on. It's just you're not waving the whole list in the air to get everybody along. That's not, that's not what the goal is. The goal is, is, is to, uh, to address these things uh, and, go, and go forward on. So in, in my mind, things are being worked on and he's trying the best he can with what he has, but it's hard to figure out how to address these different things. I mean, it's a full-time job, just with one item. <laughs> just, just trying to get through it. So I understand that. So I guess my question is, how are you actually going to execute this so that we can catch up and stop wasting money, which is what the ultimate answer to the problem is here. We're wasting money because we have all these problems that we couldn't address because we didn't have any money. But if we had been investigating, Maybe we could have at least known exactly what they were, what was needed, and when we got the money, we yep. could spend it. You mind if I? No, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> all those, all those things are being addressed, but I think we're losing focus of why we're here, and I, and I don't want to get off, off track because we're talking about building okay. products, yeah. our projects, and this is more of an administration thing that Matt's dealing with on a daily basis. I think. No, I, I'm going to go back to the strategy is to, you, you got to whack away at the things that have the highest re value. So for however much money the town is going to invest in a repair or renovation or, or replacement, or whatever you want to call it, what's the upside savings? And, and cherry pick those things. And then in terms of every building, the integrity of the building starts with the roof. And so you, you have your pecking order roofs, windows, and then major systems. And it, it, you just gotta work your way down that list. And I think when you can, if you can roll that out to town meeting, people can see how their assets are being properly allocated to those things. That's why when somebody asks me about gym windows, my hackles go up a little bit because uh -oh. it's an important project, but it is not essential to the operation of the town. And that's why it kind of, you know, it's 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 in the inbox, but it's pretty far away from the beating heart. Um, the, the only other thing I'll add to this, because I, I never miss an opportunity, Madam Chair, to be philosophical, but I promise I'll do it in two sentences. Contrary to popular 
belief, municipal government is not finishing school. If you want to manage, you're going to have conflict. And when you pick senior managers who aren't willing to fight for the things that need to be done, they don't get done, and everybody's under the impression that everything's hunky-dory because there's no conflict. Sometimes, you know, what do they say? Sometimes you got to break eggs to scramble eggs, something like that. Well, I'm still got a few eggs to break yet. <laughs> Sorry. Uh -huh. I had to say it because it's, it, it's stressful. And nobody wants to be that person. I don't want to poke my finger in anybody's eye and say, why don't you just do your bleeping job? But sometimes it needs to be said. Fred, do you Quick have question on this subject while we have men. Is it typically the town administrator's job to s take care of these systems, you know, physical, or is it, if we didn't, like, if you didn't happen to have some knowledge on these things, we'd be even worse shape than we are? First of all, I don't know how much knowledge I have. Smart people know what they don't know. So I ask guys like Mike for opinions. Yeah. I do know enough about the world because I grew up on a farm. <laughs> you know, things need to be fixed. You can't run a farm without a tractor. You can't bale hay without a baler. You got to take care of your stuff. But it's all about asking the right people. I just think it's where you are as a town. So you're, call it 8,700 people. In smaller communities in Western Massachusetts, the select board still does all the work. In some cases, the select board also serves as the board of health, and they're out inspecting sewer holes, you know, septic system installations. Right. And so you're not that far away from it. In a town very similar to you, Dighton, they just hired their first town administrator three years ago. Mm -hmm. They were doing all, the select board was doing absolutely everything. So you're past that, but you're not to the point where you can afford to have a, a more expansive staff. Now, I've mentioned this in select board meetings, so I'll mention it here. The superintendent has suggested to me, the school superintendent, that we might share a couple of positions, maybe not a right away in the next budget, but we need to start talking about sharing an HR position and sharing a facilities manager position because all told, if you add up our number of employees and you add up the number of buildings and our liability exposure on both accounts, we don't have specialists dealing with either of those issues, our people or our buildings. Mm -hmm. So that's a conversation that we need to have with the taxpayers of the town at town meeting in the Just near future. Just a couple future. of repairs caught in time could easily pay for that kind of business. Exactly. Yeah. Just, just in the avoiding the insurance premiums. Just in oh. the, just in the, what we our uh, maintenance costs over the last year. What did we spend on 160? Oh, you mean just on HVAC over there? Correct. 160. Right. So, could have some of that been prevented? I have no idea until you until you look into it. But I I would suspect that we could have probably pretty much funded that position. And if it had been running more efficiently because it was maintained, there's even more money there. Yeah, or just to know, it, it, Adam is very, very diligent about what he does for uh, the other buildings in town, make sure that he understands and he holds, holds a little pressure on our contractors. I'm not necessarily convinced that that's happening. Just looking through those invoices that I see, um, there's some basic questions I would have asked. Um, Maybe I'm wrong, and maybe I'm right. Who knows? It doesn't matter. Um, but I think that if we move towards that particular direction that Matt's suggesting, it may be beneficial to the town. I agree. It would help, yeah. help quite a bit. It's sensible. Um, Linda, you have any comment, question? Con no? Um, OK. Uh, Fred, any more questions? No, just the word inefficient keeps coming in my head. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, right. what in every segment of how it's yeah, done. Right. Yeah. What and, happens is go he ahead. gets distracted with the stuff that he shouldn't be distracted yeah. with, which prevents him from doing other things, whether it's catching a mathematical error on a grant. <laughs> so my, yeah. my question... At the moment, the Town Administrator Act does charge my position with the supervision of the town's buildings. Those that are under the direct supervision of the Board of Selectmen, the Town Administrator is supposed to be by the act, the day-to-day -day manager of those things, and I inherit anything that gets handed over to us. <laughs> so the Recreation Commission, a lot of people don't understand this. You might, because you were on the select board for so long. Um, 
The Recreation Commission is a free-floating entity that can take title to property, and they have several properties in the town. They are responsible for those things. Mm -hmm. But they can also delegate those things back to the Board of Selectmen, mm -hmm. which in some instances they have. So we're responsible for all that stuff. Interesting. Yeah. So I do have a question for you, uh, and I think, you know, Ginger brought it up. She said, so basically, what are you going to do about this? So. When is it going back to the Board of Selectmen for a discussion? Because for this whole problem. Well, I think I've kept them clued in pretty, pretty much up to date. Um, have we sat down and had a more general policy discussion about the overall problem and how mm -hmm. to address it? No, I, I think we're still getting our feet wet with capital. This is probably the second full year that we've been able to fully fund a capital budget. Yes. So getting that committee up and running fully and then adjusting their rating system so that it is a little bit more modern, more tied mm -hmm. to the realities, mm -hmm. um, that took two years. So, you know, all of this stuff takes time. But I, I think that we're definitely on the right course. You know, we're, we're starting to ask the right questions and look into the right issues. Um, the select board, I think, has a very difficult job because they need to balance this conversation with other conversations. Roadways and paving and bridges mm -hmm. as well as the overall headcount. Mm -hmm. So. We're getting into a phase of the budget now. We had originally asked the town for an override, said we can get through th three years without using free cash for operations. Unless we shake the tree and we start to turn the tanker, then we might be able to get to years four and five and not use any free cash. The very good news for the people of the town is that we can turn the tanker more than one or two degrees. So we're not using any free cash at all. It's year four. We're not going to use any next year. So we're going to get through all five years without using free cash for operations. And if some of these projects, and I am optimistic that economic development projects will happen, our revenue base will be diversified and stronger, and we'll be able to stabilize the position we're in. To a point, there's, if you're into math, you remember step functions, right? So, you know, it, adding another kid to Douglas doesn't mean you're going to hire a new teacher. You keep getting kids until you have so many classrooms full, you need to hire a few teachers mm -hmm. because that's what's happening. That's what happens to a town. You get to the point where one ambulance 24-7 isn't going to be enough anymore. You need two. Well, you can't staff the second ambulance with half a person. You'll need two people for three shifts. That's six people. So that you jump up to that next step fairly quickly. In terms of financial planning for the Board of Selectmen, that's the human piece. The buildings and vehicles and asset piece is an asset management plan that I think we need to roll out to capital fully this year. But that big com component of that is operational maintenance. That, that, and, I, and to her credit, Jean Lovett has asked for that special attention be given to operating maintenance now for seven or eight years at mm -hmm. least. So she's been talking about it all along. Mm -hmm. But you just, you got to have the resources to be able to actually implement that. Okay. All right. Everybody okay? Any questions, comments? So on to the municipal backup generator. And the last we heard, you are going to be starting to write if you haven't already, an RFP. Where is this? <clears throat> so I am writing the RFP. That is, um, I started yesterday, made good progress on it today. Uh, designer selection is governed by Chapter 7 of the Massachusetts General Laws. And Chapter 7 is primarily for state agencies. Designer selection uh, laws apply to the municipalities by reference only. So 
there is a directive for local localities to have their own designer selection regulations. Douglas, you passed them in 2011. Mm -hmm. So um, they may need to be updated just a little bit because the thresholds, the dollar thresholds have changed mm -hmm. uh, as, as recently as last year. So um, designer selection has one really unique characteristic. It is not, <laughs> it is not a cost comparison selection process. So it is actually illegal in Massachusetts to conduct designer selection on a basis of price and price alone. You can set a not to exceed fee. You can negotiate a fee with the designer that has the highest rating. Mm -hmm. Or you can specify no process at all, in which case you would just do your ratings and then just conduct a negotiation at, after the end. Um, but you can't, you can't choose based only on the, on the cost basis. So in writing this RFP, what we have to do is look at the qualifications we want for who's going to be doing the work and then the scope of the work itself. And um, the scope of the work, I think, is very clear for the backup generator. The um, how we parse out how we're going to differentiate the different electrical contractors that might bid on this project, um, or the electrical designers that might bid out on this project, is, is something I have to put some thought to. So, how many years of experience? How many similar jobs? Um, now, but that's the, the good news is it's not that complicated, right? It's, it's a generator for a building. Um, the problem is, again, I hate to be, kick a dead horse, but our, the generators in town were not properly installed. So we have transfer switches, but we don't have surge suppression. Mm -hmm. So when, our, when we lose power in Douglas and these buildings turn on, the power just, you know, just comes right at stuff, mm -hmm. and we fry an appliance mm -hmm. in ev just about every building every time. Most of the time, it's not something that's important, so we just kind of roll with the punches. We only don't lose power that much anymore. But if it's a internet connection, then the police department loses internet connectivity, which means they lose the ability to do background checks, to run plates, to mm -hmm. do a whole bunch of stuff. So. That component of it is an essential part of what we need to do. So there's surge suppression, and then there's design over all the protection that we need for vital systems. Our IT guys have it largely in, handled, but there's that component of it that's critical. The last time we had somebody in this building was to support a grant application, and it was, was it Murphy, uh, Adam? It was Mike, right? Kevin. Kevin. Kevin Murphy came and very kindly donated a, a survey, which typically costs about 1500 bucks, uh, of the town's needs for an emergency backup generator. And this was going to be a community compact grant. And we were unsuccessful with the grant, but we got a lot of good information, thanks to Mr. Murphy, mm -hmm. about the problems in this building. The school was added on to piece by piece. So the electrical service in, the te in, in this building is not all in one place. And the question is posed as to whether or not we're going to be able to hook up a generator for the whole building that adequately takes into consideration all these service connections. That's and the, the way the service is broken out in the building. So that's what a design professional has got to do. It's, it's a little bit. It's not as straightforward as come put a generator in and mm -hmm. write the specs for us. It's yeah. tell us how design the installation so that it does what we want it to do. The ambition for the building is a little bit more than it was in the past. It's, it's after a lot of discussion, this is the only place we can have an emergency operations mm -hmm. center. It really is. Uh, the police are already here and that's part of the, the equation. Our 911 position is downstairs here, which isn't part of the decision. Um, but there's also just the room, the space that we need 
so when we had a fire up the street here and there was a pretty large apartment building, the Red Cross came in to help all those people and we had no, you know, we were scrambling but we at least had a place to put them. If, mm -hmm. if the EOC was at the fire department or any other place, there wouldn't have been the space to have all those people come in and sure. I know Chris Furnow bought them breakfast and we kind of spent the whole day just helping those people. We need to be able to do that. So um, we can't just have a couple of lights on. If this is the EOC, it has to be fully operational. The lights, the heat, the computers, everything has to work. Long story short. Questions? Yeah, Ginger. And I put my oar in a place where I have no water. I shouldn't be needing this water. But my question is, if everything goes and then you bring it back and in the process you lose certain equipment because it's too much of a surge. Why isn't everything shut off and just a few things put on and then rolled on after that so that that doesn't happen? Well, that's an excellent question. I think it's because it's so unpredictable. What's unpredictable? The loss of power. Well, it's an automatic transfer switch. So it automatically comes on. It's not like we lose power and then Adam got to go turn on the generator. Yeah. This thing fires up by itself. Yeah. Yes. There's no way to do that. The only generator that has that right now is the highway generator, which we took from the middle school when they were getting rid of it because, you know, we just take whatever we can get, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> in order to open the doors, I got to get the generator fired up to open the doors. You know, <laughs> They don't have that time. They need to get out the door right away. So yeah, no, it all makes sense to me. I'm just thinking, okay. during, what's during the solution until we get to the place where we have the right equipment? During one of the incidents, and the police lose their uh, phone service for like two hours or something. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we've got things patched together. I, I, we've come so far in the last four years, I can tell you. Because uh, I can't speak to what happened before, but... Um, our IT guys have really done a wonderful job. Mm -hmm. The town, <coughs> so before I started here, the town was successful in getting a grant for to rewire the building. So we went from category two wires to like category five, which helps with data and voice transmission. Uh, certainly it lent a lot of stability to our network um, as one component of the network. Secondly, we took over our network because Spectrum had control of it. We had a contract with Spectrum where they basically ran our network and owned all the equipment. So we took that away from them. We stopped paying for services we don't use and just really focused on, you know, virtualizing our environment here mm -hmm. so that we can, the town of Douglas will exist no matter what happens because we're using security and versioning and ev everything else. Our network is in the cloud, not just our data, our whole network is in the cloud. So. We're coming a long way, but we still have the basic hardware still has to run. And APS units only get you so much. So they'll protect the equipment behind it from a surge. They might be able to power the equipment. So our servers are set up so that if they detect a loss of power, they automatically shut down. But they still need power to shut down. So the APS has enough power for about 20 minutes to allow our servers to s shut down in a stable fashion. But then, th then they're off. <laughs> <laughs> and the APS is usually fried. Um, so, Fred? I don't know how we got off on this tangent, Linda? but is the generator. So, I guess my question is, when do you expect to? I would like this to turn around very quickly. So when I am done, with the RFP, Bye. the process usually goes, I'll spend, I wish I could say it would take a week. Barring any lightning strikes on buildings, people abruptly resigning or leaving, uh, floods, crashed cars, or anything else. If we just have a normal week, for God's sake, yeah. I'll get it done, and I'll give it to Rich Bowen, and usually what he will do is he'll review it as to form, yeah, and gets it back to me within a, about a week then I would publish this in the central register for 30 days. So that's the that would be the next three steps that we mm -hmm. need to take. Okay. And you'll keep us posted. Well, I think after Rich vets it, 
I would be sending a copy to you. Hopefully there would be some intervening conversation. Because mm -hmm. um, the register, I can publish it, I can always change what I publish. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna stop the timeline. But we can have a conversation here, but then when those 30 days are up, we'd, we'd open them and see what we got. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Item five is Bad Luck Pond, and that's ready to go. The bridge. bridge Cedar Street, Street Bridge. So Waiting the troll has stopped the goat. I'm sorry. <laughs> from clickety clacking across the, bri the bridge. <laughs> um, so Come on, it's better than what it was, right, Adam? He doesn't remember the old. <laughs> <laughs> right. There's no appreciation. Jeez. To remind everyone in TV land who might ever watch this meeting, oh God. Um, when the bridge was last fixed, it was a 20 year fix, is that right, Adam? 15 year 15, fix. Yeah. And we are in year 15. So. Bill Cundiff applied for a small bridge grant and was successful. Mm -hmm. So the lion's share of the money, the half million dollars, is coming from that successful grant effort. Then we had this like insane detailed process for all the takings and all the realignment of this and then that. Because one of the problems with the bridge is that it's not aligned nicely to the roadway. So some people, I'll wave my hand, I plead guilty may go over the bridge a little too fast, <laughs> may have kissed the side of the guardrail with his wife's car. <laughs> uh oh. The sense of urgency to replace the bridge is definitely there. <laughs> yep. um, National Grid is moving the poles. They were scheduled to do that this week after we did expedite the poll petition process for them. But then this weather hit. Yeah. So they've been postponing. They've postponed for a week. It'll be, it'll be another week before they're out there. Once the poles are moved, I think we're a go. I think uh, New England Bridge, Building and Bridge is the selected vendor. And they're going to be starting work. Okay. They, there's a time frame, and I want to say it's 60 days. 60 or 90 days. From the time their shovel hits the ground, 88, they are 88, 88, 88 days. days. Yeah. We have here 88 days for construction. <clears throat> okay, and as long as the proper signage is putting up so people don't drive all the way around and then find they can't go that way, but they need to. So we, because we this and we've talked to the contractor on site, we said well, especially now before this little delay that we're in with the water slides and the traffic that the res gets, we wanted to make sure there's enough sign yes. out there in advance that everyone knows so it yep. will have sign boards out there and everything. So okay. once it's ready to go and we know we'll have enough information out there, we'll let everyone know. Great. Thanks, Adam. All right, item six is the municipal fire alarm. And we've been talking about this for too many years. Yep. So We're gonna do the roof first. Yeah. Not real excited about putting low voltage wires under a leaky roof. That's right. So we're just going to hold off on it and do the roof. Hold until the roof is then go from there, right? Yep. Is that what you're saying? Yes, correct. Okay. Item seven. And then a big, big fight, by the way. Yes. <laughs> Once the roof is done, the conversation will turn to whether or not we can occupy the second floor with or without sprinklers. Oh. Because that Everybody has an opinion. Uh, everybody's opinion is not worth much more than a piece of paper at this point. Um, I think the town, per, my personal opinion, and that's all it is, is an opinion, Madam Chair, is that the town was misled. We do not need to sprinkle that space up there uh, at all. I think we have very short distances to egress. As long as properly alarmed and emergency lighting, we should be able to use the space up there without any further um, renovation. That's just my opinion. I, I think that the building commissioner we have now is of a similar opinion. So we might be getting there. Um, right now I just am not very comfortable with, we can't go upstairs because we don't want to pay for sprinklers. So what are we going to do? We're going to take all of our fire load and put it upstairs because we don't have enough room downstairs to get our work done. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense to me. So, 
So <laughs> well, I think we're gonna, I think there's a process that we can use with the state fire marshal to, to get everybody on, on the same page. Uh, that was a school use. It was a highly intense use up there. Right. And if it was okay the way it was, I can't see where a low intensity use. I would be moving non-public facing functions. So I still want the public to come in the first floor and have to only deal with the first floor. But for those of us who might need the occasional like time to think about what we're doing, it might be behoove us to occupy one or two of the rooms upstairs. Um, and then still, we're still gonna have to archive up there, but we'll be much more thoughtful about what we keep and where we store it than we have been. Okay, questions? No, okay. Item seven, municipal gymnasium windows. Whatever information you got last is the most current information. Yep. And we did have um, Ryan Hogan, who works with the young people, basketball, so forth, at our last meeting. And the question was um, blinds, shades, um, frosted windows, whatever, for the uh, light coming in at a certain time that blinds the people, the kids uh, playing. And he was, uh, I believe he stated that whatever is the cheapest that could be used. Right. Um, to, uh, go, he would be fine with it and his group. Um, but this has been going on for too, too, too many years. Yep. It's no money, it's, um, well, we can't do this right now. And of course now with the roof leak, I agree, we need to do, we need to fix the roof. But. The money is there for these windows, and I think we need to relook it, investigate it. How much is it going to cost now? Has the price gone up? And the money's still there. And he said, uh, and I agree with him, it's now summertime, time to do it. Can you tell me? that we have to wait for the roof to do these windows? That's a different part of the building, so it's a different roof. I don't think that roof is... That roof's been, been done. replaced already. So what we are trying to do and add alternate for the roof... For the, uh, for the, for the lobby. Yes. Um, it's just a matter of, of how much time we have and our priorities. I, you know... Uh, Anybody else? Comments? Just that I don't understand why we can't just do it. There are some things we just do. I know. It seems it's just a window, right? But I think our design professionals and Mike t working together saved us a pretty penny. Doing the design on these downstairs windows and, and watching the installation like a hawk. So we're doing another designer selection. So I have a um, paper here from uh, 1219 year 18. Municipal gym windows date 41002 through 123118. Municipal windows. Come on. I mean, this has been going on so long. And the other thing, frost on the windows. Come on. We're trying to save heat. And you get in the winter, it gets so cold that sometimes they have to stop the bat uh, or not have the basketball games. I'm sorry, but that's me. Anybody else? I just think we should have been able to come to a resolution before now. And we certainly ought to make an effort to resolve it. I mean, we have the money, right? You have the money for that, but your fire department just got hit by lightning. But that money has been specified for this. Right. The fire department has been hit by lightning, and it needs to be taken care of. Well, the town, I'm sure, would step up to the plate. Now you would. But if you were in the same financial condition you were two years ago. We're not talking about two years ago. Uh, this but, is but now. I, I, I'm, 
not of the opinion that you know what's coming around the corner tomorrow. And the jobs you got to get out the door are the roof and the generator. You have to do the charging stations because the grant will expire in a year. We're in the middle of one of the most expensive public works projects in the history of the town. That's your public safety radio system. Be careful what you ask for, because if you spread people so thin that they can't actually manage all of this, you're not going to get a good outcome with any of it. So against those priorities, gym windows don't rank. And it, you know, these I windows just, should have been put in years ago. So I mean, you know, come on, Matt. You know, the town Chase authorized them. The town authorized the money years ago. Chase, you know, you can. How long was Bill Cundiff here during that entire time? That's not Bill. No, but not, that's not yeah, Bill's yeah, it does. job. Oh yeah. It was. Well, it's not. <laughs> no, no. What I'm saying is, don't hold me accountable for crap that holding, went back to 2002. I'm not holding you accountable. I'm saying these ne windows need to be done. The money is there, and why? That's that's your opinion. But we'll see if the town your, we'll people voted for it. They voted for a lot of things that are still there. No, all the money's still there. So then what's the issue? The, the town voted for it. I don't know what the issue was. I mean, when I got here, I started cleaning up all these projects. Oh, stop. Let's, let's move on. Let's do this. And let's move on to all our other projects. The, well, I, Why are you reticent? I guess that's what I'm wondering. Because it's such a low priority. I don't care about the gym windows. That's the, that's that's, the bottom line. I care, no, 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 don't interrupt me. I care about ambulances and fire engines and where I put people that do these jobs that protect your life with safety. And if issues come up after the money was approved for the windows that are more important than the damn windows, then let the windows go. I don't know what you're shaking your head for. It's not a priority. It's not important. Buy me $1,000 worth of pens, why don't you? I'm always looking for a pen Matt. because pens are not that important. Matt, when you're talking about safety and ambulances stuff, you're talking to the wrong person. No, I'm not. I'm talking to the right person because if you're the one who needs it, I'm going to make sure it's there for you no. rather than waste money on a, what is basically a cosmetic project that it's does not affect the operation of the town at all. Nobody's in there now. Nobody has ever been hurt. Nobody is going to be hurt. There's no water penetrating the building. This has become a turf thing for you guys. It's not important. It is. Why are you so exercised? Man. Because we keep coming back to it. I don't know how many we times I have to dismiss it. The Fred. I don't care if it's on the list. Fred. I don't care how long it's on the list. Come on, man. I don't. Fred. Uh, I'm, I'm just coming into this now, but the first time hearing about this is the only, it seems to me, is, is it the fact that you don't have the time to write the RFP or you don't want to spend the money? Well, the, the money's there. I mean, yeah, it's, I'm not asking anybody for any money. That, that's my confusion because the town said we want these windows. Let's, yes, let's spend the money for the one that's not happening. Is the hold up now that, I can't word it, that you just simply don't have the time to write the RFP? To, it seems to me just put when you take you time to do anything there are things that you don't do the choice to be anything is a choice to not be something else and what I resent is other people telling me how to spend my time when I have other priorities that are I'm clearly you more important time. I'm asking is that the hold up you've yes you it's not a matter of just putting in a couple of fields on a form and saying this is an RFP it's all ready to go and just send it out that's not what an RFP for architecture or engineering services around a window project looks like so I have to go back get an older one update it change the location and I don't know the first thing about windows, right? Ah. And how to put them in and what those windows and how they're built. And neither do you. Well, you That's can say right. that about any project that we've talked about. You Almost. Think, yeah. yeah. Right. So how do you know you got a good product? Well, then you're going to vet this thing with a lot of people. It's time. It's just a matter of time. There's a lot of things that don't get done every single staff person in this building wants to do next. 
But the we should. Most people want this done, and they voted for it, and they gave. How it many years? You, vo you voted for it when you had almost nothing else that you could afford. It doesn't matter. <laughs> We're supposed to listen when the people speak. And when they go so far as to give us the money, that's the last act they have to do. It's just short of a command. Nobody wants to be cavalier about town meetings decision to provide the government its its local employees with the money they need to do their job. The issue is are there things that have come up since that approval that are more important than that approval? No, you can't speak for town meeting any more than I can. So no, they spoke once, that's but if you, you provide them with the new information and let them choose again. I don't know what your problem is, Matt, but you've got one, and it has nothing to do with any of this. Uh, it does. Uh, it's, it's, I just don't care about this project that's not compared to all of these other things that are more important. We care about what the people care about. Thanks. That's a nice high horse to get on, but you're not getting down to the reality, which is how much time does anybody have to do anything? How much time does anybody have to do anything? So when... So if I have time to do five RFPs, I'm going to put the roof and the generator and the other projects first, and if I don't get to the windows, I don't get to them. So the question also along with this is we did have an engineer working with us on projects like this. When are we going to have a replacement or what is going to be happening here? Notwithstanding the fact that it's completely outside the purview of your committee. No, but this all affects what the committee... No one has applied. And why? I don't know. Are we <laughs> We've advertised for three months straight. Where? Everywhere. The the um, is it Archbridge that's also looking for something? They they were looking for a planner and they didn't get one. And No, we're not going to go down this rabbit hole with the engineer thing, but th there was absolutely no value no, added. I mean, we'll <laughs> More Matt trouble. As one of two ways, whether it's a planner or an engineer. And the reason why I, I brought up Archbridge is they're not getting any applicants either. There is, there's really nobody applying for work out there for whatever reason whether they're happy where they're at or they're getting more to stay home or what, whatever the case may be. Um, and I was going to ask, and I know Bill who did a lot of these RRP before, that, and that sort of pre-mat, that's what he was charged with to, and to do most of the time to run all these RRPs. And he became pretty efficient at it because that's what he had to do all the time. Right. Um, Matt doesn't have that luxury no, I have a much big, bigger portfolio than Bill had. Bill was here all this time and didn't do this RFP, or if he did, we didn't. It wasn't resolved. It wasn't awarded to anyone. So, I, I'm not accountable for what happened before I started working here. And in the four years that I've been here, we've had the pandemic, we've had the override, we've had a whole bunch of huge issues. And I don't know why it's so hard to. I, I get frustrated, Ginger, because I. I don't people people are not listening to when I answer the question there are really big priorities and I can't see this floating to the top it's not that I'm disrespectful to the to the voters you also applied uh, uh, put money in for economic development you wanted to hire somebody to do expert and that sat on the books for since like I think 1997 and you, Madam Chair, got up at the last town meeting when I asked for money for that and said, what the heck are we doing with the money we've always had, right? And so the solution is... Before, yeah. Well, somebody had to pick it up and do something with it. Economic development isn't a committee meeting. It's a 24-7 mm -hmm. operation to know where people can locate in town, to find the people that are interested in developing, to work through the process and to get it done. 
And when that effort actually fired up, we spent that money, that town meeting appropriated for us, to get a consultant to help us file an application for a $5 million grant, which is pending right now. But it, it took all that time to resolve that issue. So the work has to get done because the money was appropriated, but I also think you have to, at some point, we will have to have a realistic conversation with town meeting and say, I've got this crisis now that developed in the last year. There's money you approved 10 years ago for a project that's not a high priority. What do you want to do? I think it's a fair question. The money belongs to the taxpayer. They may have thought they were getting gym windows 10 years ago. The money didn't get spent. Now it's still available. And do you want to be taxed again, or do you want to spend it on another project of a higher priority? That is a valid conversation. Fred? I asked the question, is it not happening because you don't have the time to do it? But it seems to me what you just said, that you'd rather spend the money elsewhere. No, I don't know what to do to fix some of these things if I don't have the money to. So, I, so, so the answer is either you don't have the time or you want to it's both. the money for It's both. If, if you... But the, the money's already been... We can go around and around, but the money's already been authorized for this project by the time. Set aside it is. It is. It is. Not to be used for anything else but that. That's correct? the way it is right now. It's is it assigned now? as... That's right, and that's why it's up. still there. It's there because of inefficiency and ineffective leadership. Whoever those people are, and I don't care who they are, but I do know that it should have been done. It wasn't done. The taxpayer wanted it, and here we sit digressing when we should be saying, let's get the damn RFP and let's get the window done. It's not that much money, first of all. How much money is it, ma'am? I don't even know. Uh, 60,000 bucks? It's somewhere around that. Yeah. I, I'm, I, you know, I'm not going to be browbeaten to doing something that is. We're not browbeating. We're uh, questioning. <laughs> well, you hey. Fool me. Be careful. Be careful. You're allowing it. You're not realistic about. Hey, it's been sitting here for years. Let's get some of this stuff done. And and you know we're we're going out for green energy, which I think is great. Anything we can save is great. And here we've got gym windows that the frost, the cold air comes through, and we don't fix it? To me, I, I don't understand it. And Matt, we're not saying that this is your fault or anything no. above. No, let's do it. Is, it's time to act. The best I can tell you is if I can get to it, I will try. Well, that's a really sad but, <laughs> I, I, look, look, folks, I, I'm not just doing this. I'm your personnel know director. We know I've got all of these other responsibilities, and those things take priority. Everything Period. Those things take priority. Got it. You can't have a staff if you don't train the staff. We've put three brand new people in here in the last month. And w Yeah, we've had people leave. So you tell me, we're right, because they retired. No, not all of them. They retired. One, two. What are you insinuating? No, I'm just saying we've got, you said we've got three We have one person people. left for a new job and one person retired. Another one. And another one I promoted from within to do the job of the person who retired, but it's a completely different job. What you don't want to hear is the fact that all of those people need to be trained. Yeah. And they answer to me. Yeah. So if they are good at their job, my job gets easier. Okay. That's more important than this RFP. It's not ridiculous. It's what a manager does. You prioritize your day. You're not going to take the time every day to okay. train those people, are you, Matt? Absolutely. So you're spending every day until they're trained with them training them. Is that right? Can you? Do no, that? that's not what I said. But it. I think Look, I, I think you've crossed the line. I I'm not. Think, this is a disrespectful conversation. I'm no. sorry. I'm a professional. I prioritize my day according to the charges I've been given by the people I report to. And Jim Windows isn't on the top, 
but getting the planning board process so that we can get applications through in a timely fashion and that people are communicating with each other and that we're utilizing all the technology that we spent the money to invest in so that we can be a more collaborative workplace. Those things are more important and there is just always going to be that priority. There are going to be things that don't get done because they are not the highest priority of the manager who is tasked with it. We spent the weekend pumping water out of a flooded part of town where we didn't weed whack the sidewalks. And no offense, but anybody who drives up and down and argues about whether or not the sidewalks should be weed whacked, of course they should be. But we'll get to it when we're not occupied with some other higher priority item. All right. Anyone else have any questions, comments? If not, we'll move on to item eight. The uh, senior brief question to kind of put a yes. stamp on this. What do we tell people that say what's happening with the windows? What, what would you like us to tell people? Do you mind if I answer that? Go ahead. I think he actually answered the question during the process of it. He got a little excited for it. Bottom line is, is he has a limited amount of time, but he did say during one of the, uh, the, the process that he will work on it and get to it when he can get to it. it. And I know it's not a definitive answer, and it's probably it's not well, an you, answer. You can shake your head at me, you're gonna just, just humor me for a minute. Um, it's not what you want to hear, it's reality. Bill started working on the design of the windows prior to him leaving. He, didn't, he wasn't able to finish that. I know that because I was involved in it. Uh, I went down, I looked at the construction of it. I don't know where these you know, gym windows fit. What, what I've gotten out of the um, last few years of dealing with these windows, they don't really need them. Should we block up the holes? Just brick it brick, up, right? Brick the holes up. Is it cheaper than putting in the windows and you're done? If they don't want the sunlight to come in, what do we need? What's the window for if it's not allowing the light in? So maybe that's a cheaper alternative to do it. Do something. It's easy to say, but at the same time, I've witnessed what he's been faced with over the last 30 days. Anyways, um, nobody's blaming Matt. No, no, I'm just, just. But in my defense, if you were me and you heard that, wouldn't you be glad you didn't spend the money on the windows? No, I would. Say I would be. It didn't work out, and so now we have got to do. Something else that isn't as important. I don't know. I want I want a consensus opinion around whether or not a these windows are needed, b what can, what should they be made out of and how, and I I, I thought this it was takes yeah that was, that, wasn't that, that, think it's was that easy. already decided that and voted on that town meeting no the whole conversation by what I just said but it was just an obs my own personal observation of, of listening to what's going on. And but, um, whether it's going to be obscured glass, black glass. Or but isn't it true that once you open those holes, the apertures can be design. filled with almost anything? The way they're set up. Right. Glass block, frosted glass, windows that open, windows that don't open, right. All it is or is blinds installed. installed. So you understand what it is, Fred. There's a, there's a rectangle open. Huh. They ran a two by six around the opening. They covered that with metal. They put the window in, attached it with a flange. These will come out and go right back in very easily. Yeah. Um, it's already been. We've already had it checked for asbestos and yes. paint, all this other stuff. All that. I thought it was done. ready to go out for no, a bit. All, all that. A design wasn't done, and we're trying to do it in house to save that money because we have sixty, approximately sixty thousand dollars for the windows. So if you hiring somebody to do a design, whether it's GRLA or whatever. I'm sure that he's going to eat up six or ten grand to do that, and then do you have enough to do the window? So when was the asbestos analysis done? Three years ago. Who was who was here then, town administrator? Me. Oh. Right. Yeah. Right. So, in order to do your project, somebody had to think out of the box a little, and is there asbestos? Are there PCB in any caulking? And did the testing. Which I did. Yeah. So if it was done two years ago, what's happened between two years ago and now? Nothing. That's our whole point. <coughs> no. You had a pandemic. That isn't. No. 
everybody yes. still functioned with the pandemic. No, about, they didn't. I don't know about here in Douglas, but I know people that worked during the pandemic. So I don't know why we keep using that as the reason. Because, because you're, not, you're not understanding that everybody else worked, but so did we. We did two jobs. We did the emergency response to the that pandemic, and we didn't do any capital projects that year. Zero. Because you had to find somebody who was willing to come here and do the work. So I don't know. My history is a little bit different. I got here, the project was dead. We did the hazardous substances analysis, which was a necessary part of the project. And then we got waylaid by an event outside of our control that took up almost all of our time. And now here we are, we're finally out of the emergency as of what? June 15th. Maybe. Maybe. Right. I'm not sure about that. Meanwhile, we're going to just not do anything when it happens again? Or are we going to be better prepared? Oh, we're going to be much better prepared. Well, that's good. No. I mean, well, you know, this is a foolish conversation. I think so. <laughs> I agree. I, we agree on one thing. On this conversation, because we are obviously at loggerheads. You refuse to do what the town has asked. We got that. So you go your way and do whatever you want. And the taxpayers can take the hindmost. And it's not really going to be that way. What we're going to do is we're going to do the highest priority items. And manipulate them into believing that it doesn't need to be done anyway, and we can save the 60000 That's what you said. So we're done here. No, we're not, because we've got other items to Maybe they were manipulated in the first place, and I'm unmanipulating them. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't want to use that word. Well, I mean, you, I'm not the first one to use it. You open the door. Listen, That's at the, the end of the that day... People that are involved with, with the kids and the basketball teams and, and going into that coal bill room and, and so forth, uh, I wouldn't want to do that, to man, saying they were manipulated. They manipulated. Yeah, no. Let's get on let's with... Uh, on anybody else has let's else. get on with the senior <laughs> center flooring. I hear I'm not going to regret a single thing, I'll tell you right now. Oh. The senior center flooring I hear is complete and I hear good comments. Am I right, Adam? Yes, Patrice is very happy with it. Came out very nice. So, yeah, very good. That's great. That's fabulous. So we had two Done. change orders um, that I signed today. Once the old floor was taken up after the yep. asbestos abatement was done, the f underlaying floor was not level. Yep. So we needed to find underlayment and run between Scylla and Charybdis on the pricing of it because it's become incredibly expensive. I think we, we, we've actually got a pretty good deal on it. So he was able to put it down. There, were, there was some confusion about two very small spaces, a closet and the, I think there was a kitchen that was not part of the original spec, ended up being another $3,000. But the workmanship was outstanding, I think good. it's fair to say. It looks really nice. That, together with the mural on the walls, it's a beautiful space for our seniors. What's the mural on the wall now? Picture of you. No. <laughs> it's actually a picture of you and I discussing gym windows. No, it's um, it's a historic downtown. It is. It's yeah. Really different buildings in town. Different buildings in town. People that History. were here when that was there are very upset still that it was ever taken off. But that's another matter. What's that? that. What are you talking Again. about? Again. Are you talking about the tiger? Yeah. Yeah, but we're talking about the senior center. Okay. Yeah, so there's, a, there's a mural down there with like a three-dimensional it's, it's very element. nice. And Patrice is always saying, come see the flooring. Yeah, and, and, and yes. Well, I seen her yesterday, and when she did comment on, she says, uh, with the work being done, it eliminated all the allergy problems and the uh, mustiness of it. Yeah, that's good. And everybody's commenting on immediately. So yeah, that's good. good. And because, Madam Chair, I want to agree with Ginger as much as I can, I agree with you. I'm furious that they painted over that tiger, and that vendor will never come back to Douglas, no matter how tiger, cheap. Tiger, yeah. yeah. that is such a terrible. It's an abomination. And I, it is abomination. Yeah, it is. Horrible. Okay. So, um, senior center flooring item can be taken off of our list. Yep. 
Public Safety Radio System. Where are we? And uh... so, um, not to get into all the technical details as best I can. We had to make sure that there was a fiber connection between all of these sites. Uh, and we worked with Spectrum and Spectrum has installed and tested. And we already had a fiber connection. We had switched over to copper because it was actually more, it was faster and cheaper. But it also gets interference. So we moved our traffic back on the fiber. It's all set up. The second piece is that we signed all the contracts locked in all the pricing. The third piece is they now, there's this lull. It's going to feel like a lull because they are obtaining FCC approval for frequency. So highway and water are going to have their own VHF frequency. So these these three systems in town will all be on VHF and they'll all be able to hear each other. And the radios will be programmed so they can talk to each other. But that frequency takes time. And I think, Fred, you know a little bit about this kind of thing. From your, from your, either your work or your interests, um, it's a few months for us to make. We have to make sure we don't interfere with anybody within broadcast range. The other piece that we need to do to be ready, and I anticipate it won't take long, so I haven't gotten to it yet, is getting the lease agreement for our equipment to go on Industrial Communications Tower in Webster, which is right uh, at the end of the end of the town, yeah. uh, town boundary. Yeah. It's going to broadcast back this way. Yeah. Uh, cover a lot of our dead spots. So I'm anticipating that I will get that done this month as well so that when we get to September time frame, we should have everything lined up, the frequency and everything will be, will be ready. There's that small antenna. antenna stand if you want. It has to go on the high school for that, for that last spot. Um, but that's a a local electrician will be hired to sub that out and build that up. We'll most likely see this project by the end of the day, you think? <sighs> yeah, that's, we really, really, really want to get this done. Um, in the meantime, I'm pleased to say the vendor has been a reliable support for us. We've had problems with our system. They've come, they've given us loaners free of charge, mm -hmm. programmed everything for us, and made up for some problems we've had with our system so mm -hmm. um, again you know every time you lift up a stone you know wires taped together with electrical tape it's just we're gonna finally be able to get away from that good okay questions no. anybody no. all right status of the oil spill um, Adam has given us, or you and Adam have um, comments on our, our insurance cap is 500000 and our current total is $461,623.16. And um, they're recommending more testing. Is that correct? So this is probably the most depressing thing that's happened short of loss of you know, human life or human life. Yep. Um, let it be a lesson to us all. 350 gallons of diesel, right? It's a lot of diesel, but who would have thought it would be half a million bucks? Mm -hmm. And it's a never-ending saga. We got a brief glimmer of hope the last time they came. They could smell, I guess, diesel at the top of the monitoring well. Mm -hmm. But when they did the actual chemical test, they came back with acceptable levels. Oh, good. Now, there's a chance that all this rain and the groundwater and everything else may have diluted the product. And so when we go back to normal, we might see it again. So that's what we're waiting with bated breath. So we're, how, how we're probably going to go over the cap, though. What is it going to be, Adam? Is it 100 and it's gonna be, uh, 146? Our cost over the cap will probably be around 101, 102,000. Yeah. It says 90 on here. That's they had one other um, invoice that was missing from this number that we didn't have at the time, but it'll probably be a, a 101, 102,000. That's if nothing changes. If nothing changes. At this point, it'll so, be over the 500,000. Well, $600,000 bill. 
okay. the cleanup is done. Yes. So all the soil's gone, backfilled, all set. So all we got now are pipes in the ground for monitoring the the water. Good. Questions? Good. Okay. And I guess the only other thing we have to worry about is. What are we going to do for a replacement system, madam? I'm working on that. We have, we've paid, I paid out of my budget for a design, and then I have to go back out to town meeting, uh, for town meeting funds, along with this extra $100,000, we're going to add on the replacement cost for the new equipment and go back to town meeting when um, in the fall. I yep. can keep the system right now that's running and <laughs> basically have to manually fill it. Right now it's great because it's summer and we don't need oil, so it works out, but I'm in. <laughs> manually fill it at the, this point and um, we're going to go to town meeting for the rest of the funding costs once I know a cost for the new equipment which I'm working on right now. Okay. There's still a possibility of subrogating some of this claim. I'm not optimistic. Okay. That was an unfortunate situation. All right, post office painting. We've had some issues and finally got a contractor and I do. So uh, tomorrow they stop by to sign the contract. Oh, good. Two days they'll have the bond, um, and then they're going to proceed. My goal is to have it completed by August 27th before school starts. Okay. Nice. Questions? Comments? Anybody? Just a quick point. We, we struggle to get vendors. Um, so for both the senior center mm -hmm. floors and this painting project, it's been a lot of work by Patrice and Adam to locate people who even want to bid. Uh, but I think we got the right people this time. Good. So. And be qualified. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. They have all the right insurance and the ability right. to do it. Okay, any other questions, comments? Um, the next meeting is supposed to be August 18th, 2021 at 7. Do you want to meet at 7? I'm fine with that. Yeah, fine with that. Okay. And if we need to discuss items with you again, we hope you'll be willing to well, discuss them. We just got to get into a, a habit of sending you reports early enough in advance where if, So I I really appreciate the committee being patient. Life is complicated. I have my wife and I have decided to take on a mission, and we have six some very small children. Four of them are adopted, two of them are foster kids. Uh, the oldest is six, the youngest is three. So it's very, it, night meetings have become a challenge. Mm -hmm. um, so I appreciate you bearing with me to at you least be able to. During the day again? If you want to hear from me, that's easiest, but I also don't want to crimp the, I mean, you have to get a quorum and you have to do your business. Yes. So I don't want to plan around me, but. Um, Regardless of Matt's availability, my I'm, afternoons are better for me. I'm available during the afternoon. The only one that might not be once his situation. Afternoons would be tough for me, but I'm yeah. not. Yeah. I can do either or. Afternoons are better, but well, don't really. Let's see how this goes. Why don't we stick to our regular Wednesday at seven, and during the good weather, and if also we. Um, need to have discussions with Matt about issues um, we can always I can always uh, question if we can have an afternoon meeting yeah and I would I would appreciate yeah I mean please the attitude I mean it's it's I don't want to know about your personal problems well I don't care for your lack of sympathy for them I'm, I'm sorry but that was rude uh, I don't it's think ridiculous. we should get into some personal things here. Okay. I, mean, I was thanking you for bearing with me. Yeah. You don't hold it against me. That's a, that's insanely no arrogant. Holding anything against you. No. That's our whole point. We're not. <laughs> yeah. We'll just go out and spend three hundred bucks. You know, we don't give a shit. I mean, knock it off. No. What are you talking about? Uh, I don't problem. know. The, I don't no. know. I didn't bring it up. You think about it. No, I'm, I'm, all, I'm right. all set. Any other questions, comments? What a rude person. Unbelievable. You're all set with August 18th? Outrageous. At 7? Yeah. yeah. All right. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. 
Motion by Fred, seconded by Linda. Yep. All right, so moved. Let's 